good afternoon, everyone. Let me uh, first of all thank you guys for joining us this afternoon. As usual, it's great to have Dr. Toomey with us, and she'll be giving you an update in just a few minutes. Uh, first off today, I just wanted to give everyone a quick update on what we're seeing with some of our key data points in our fight against COVID-19. As we expected, with higher cases and hospitalizations, we're unfortunately seeing more deaths being reported on our dashboard. As you can imagine, this is heartbreaking for so many Georgians, including myself, that have lost friends or loved ones or folks that are pillars in your local community, folks that have been serving in state and local governments, first responders and, and others. And we just continue to keep them all in our thoughts and prayers. But this is why it is absolutely critical that my fellow Georgians continue following the guidance and guidelines that we've talked about for months and months now. Wear your mask, wash your distance, continue washing your hands, and follow the guidance that we have under Dr. Toomey's leadership and our executive orders. Yes, the vaccine is here. Therapeutics have gotten much better, and I want to encourage those that have had COVID that have recovered to consider giving plasma. We need the antibodies for continued therapeutical treatments, and they're more available than they ever have been. But this does not mean that this virus cannot kill you or put you in the hospital before we're able to get the vaccine to you. And we know that the demand that we're seeing not only in Georgia but across the country for the vaccine, it's going to continue to take us more time to reach herd immunity. In fact, with this new, more contagious variant being confirmed, this deadly disease has only become more challenging and this is not the time to grow complacent. That being said, I am encouraged to see some good news in our data trends other than the deaths. First of all, our current hospitalizations as of today at 3, p 3 p.m. stand at 5,332. That is the lowest that we have seen in over two weeks. And while this is still very high, our statewide test positivity rate has declined from 19.5% on January 5th to 16.7% as of today. Our seven-day average of new cases reported is 5,831. That's the lowest that this has been since January the 2nd. Just a reminder, though, these numbers are all higher than our summer surge, but it is certainly welcome news that the steady increases we saw over Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's are now starting to decline. However, I want to be clear with Georgians watching this. Our hospitals cannot handle another surge in COVID-19 patients on top of their current workload. This is not an all clear signal. We've got to continue to keep our foot on the gas. Our hospitals are currently utilizing emergency capacity. And as you all know, the Georgia World Congress Center has been open with a 60 bed capacity and that is reaching its limit as well. So I would ask everyone to continue to heed the guidance uh, we all know what spreads the virus, so please take responsibility for yourself and for those you may come in contact with by not engaging in high-risk behavior. Because we've seen before that working together, we can get through this. Now, I wanted to give you just a quick update on vaccine distribution. First, I'd like to encourage those in the media to begin using the Georgia Department of Public Health's dashboard to receive accurate vaccine administration data and information for our state. Other websites, the CDC in particular, will continue to have a 48 to 72 hour lag compared to the numbers reported on DPH's site. For example, the state is now reporting 139,000 more vaccines than what the CDC website shows today. The state's data, which is available on the Department of Public Health website, shows that as of yesterday afternoon, we have administered 535,920 vaccines. That's over 50% of the total shipped to Georgia. For that perspective, we had administered and reported 
94,607 vaccines on January the 4th, so a little less than 100,000 doses on January 4th. We have increased that 466% in the last 17 days. As a reminder, our current vaccine allocation from the federal government still stands at 120,000 doses per week. Up to now, 40,000 of those doses have been automatically sent to CVS and Walgreens for administrations, administration to nursing home staff and residents. Given that both CVS and Walgreens now have adequate supply to complete that miss mission, the state will begin receiving the full 120,000 dose allotment next week. This is certainly a positive step forward in our vaccine distribution efforts and it will mean 50% more supply than we were previously able to provide to the expanded 1A population. But I also, in saying that, want to continue to urge caution and patience for everyone watching today and those in the media. We will still have far more demand than we have supply. We have now administered over a half a million vaccines, but the expanded 1A population accounts for over 2 million people. Those 120,000 doses have to be divided up between 159 counties, 18 public health districts, and over 1,700 providers who are currently enrolled in the system. These additional doses in, in the short term will allow existing providers and Department of Public Health or public health departments at the county level and others to expand the number of appointments that they are currently scheduling. That is good news. But again, our total supply of 120,000 doses next week does not fulfill the demand from seniors and other at-risk eligible Georgians. At this time, we will not be expanding our current vaccine criteria beyond the 1A plus population. The two top considerations on expanding vaccine criteria will continue to be overall supply and the number of currently eligible Georgians already vaccinated. Standing here today, neither of those two metrics has been met in order to expand eligibility. Looking ahead, we will be announcing further mass vaccination sites in the coming days to expand our vaccine administration efforts given the increased supply of an additional 40,000 doses per week, and that is certainly good news. But again, our overall allocation remains unchanged. For now, demand will continue to far exceed the supply of the vaccine that we have. If the Biden administration announces an increase of that allocation of 120,000 doses, we will provide those updates, as you can imagine, as quickly as we can. With that, I want to turn it over to Dr. Toomey, and then I'll come back up for any questions that you all may have. Dr. Toomey. Thank you so much, and I just wanted to give you an update on where we are and, and answer, I hope, proactively some of the questions you may have and then can uh, additionally answer other questions. Right now, as of 10 a.m. today, 552,558 Georgians have gotten vaccine. Some of those were second doses, but uh, most of them were first doses. And I, as the governor pointed out, there's been a lag in the data reporting on many of the websites, most, and we have worked diligently with CDC to ensure that it, we are as close to real time as possible, but even so, there still will be a three-day lag, that just by nature of how they're doing that. So please look on our website for the most up-to-date up information. And we will soon be breaking that out by first dose and second dose, so there's a, a better understanding of how many Georgians have been fully vaccinated with both doses, um, whether they got Pfizer or Moderna, both of which required two vaccines. I know we have, I've gotten many, many calls, many emails uh, from concerned citizens that they haven't yet gotten an appointment for their second dose, or, and some providers have said they won't provide second doses. We are going to work with providers to ensure that that 
does continue, that they do provide that second dose. That's that is the vaccine protocol to give two doses. Within our health departments, now all are now beginning to schedule the second dose at the time they give the first dose. That hadn't been the case when we first rolled out our, our campaign. And all the counties now are beginning to call back individuals who haven't gotten their second dose if their time is up to make sure they're aware that they're eligible and to give them a time slot to come in, just as many hospitals have begun to do that with their patient populations as well. I know the biggest concern probably is Fulton because they've given among the highest number of vaccines and uh, have, have the largest population and they are working diligently to ensure that everybody is contacted and will have enough doses and we will have enough doses between what is already allocated and what will be coming in set aside so that everybody who was initially vaccinated in Fulton will, will be able to get their second dose. So I do want to very much uh, want to reassure everyone, regardless of where you live, if you've, been gotten, if you've gotten your vaccines by going to a health department, you will be able to get your second dose. And those will be scheduled on a regular basis uh, in the next few days in, in an ongoing way for those who get their first doses. We are continuing with our, the Georgia Immunization Registry training with providers because that is one of the impediments to having accurate dosage numbers of where we are going and, and what our, our vaccine needs are. And we are hoping that we will be working towards a new vaccine, vaccine. management system in the weeks ahead because I think that will help us expedite both the allocation and the follow-up including provider education and we will be rolling that out and giving you an update on that as that happens with that streamlined data reporting in the in the coming weeks. We do have an, on our website and I hope you've taken a look at that updated the uh, available sites for to receive vaccine that includes not only the private sector providers or own health departments but also large chain pharmacies Walmarts uh, all over the various parts of the state as, as well as some um, other uh, some other pharmacy chains like Publix and Ingalls and we will continue to add providers but right now we have 16 between 16 and 1700 providers that we can utilize, but we simply don't have the vaccine. And as I said this morning at a, at a meeting, you know, the biggest impediment now to getting vaccine into arms is having an adequate supply, an ongoing cadence of, of vaccine arriving from the federal government. This is a federal program. All the logistics are done at the federal level. You know, we direct where the vaccine goes in the state, but the transport of that vaccine uh, is, is all directed by the federal government, uh, either through their contractor or, th or directly from Pfizer itself. And so that's a, a, a challenge until more vaccine becomes available. And as, as Governor pointed out, you know, we have been told that the new administration will have some plans for increasing vaccine production and roll out, but until we get firm numbers, we will continue to uh, hope that we continue at least with the steady cadence of, of that now 120,000 doses, um, now that CVS and Walgreens are no longer taking that, those doses off the top. Um, I, again, to remind everyone, you can go anywhere to any health department and receive your vaccination. If you live in Fulton, you could go to DeKalb, you could go to Cobb, you could go to Gwinnett, uh, in, same in rural Georgia. So I don't, I want to, I know there's been a lot of discussion, I've seen that on social media. Uh, I just want to reassure everyone, go where you can, where there's availability, where you have the, uh, where you can uh, get your, your appointment. Appointments are necessary because we don't want you waiting in line. And we hope by the early next month, we will have a scheduling tool that will be uniform across all counties that it won't be uh, uh, different scheduling tools county by county. And I know that's going to make a big difference for individuals who are trying to get vaccinated. Um, the other thing I just wanted to point out uh, as an aside um, is that I mentioned at our last press conference that we had identified at least one case of that new variant 
We now have five cases identified and confirmed. Um, so the, it, we have a regular uh, surveillance for that th through CDC is working with us, as well as our own laboratory, public health lab, does a certain uh, assessment, not every single positive case, but every, uh, every uh, cadence of, of positives are checked for that variant. And right now we have five, but anticipate we will have additional because this vaccine, this, this, this variant, this virus does spread easily. And you know, we are urging people to take even extra precautions, wear a mask, social distance, please avoid crowds, wash your hands, and just know that um, it is even easier to acquire COVID now going out in public spaces than before, because with this variant, it's more easily spread. Uh, at least to date, it does not appear to be more dangerous in the sense it doesn't cause more complications. Um, but it, every, every COVID case can be deadly for young people and particularly for the elderly. Uh, so that precaution is important. And so far in all the variants tested, they are sensitive to the vaccine. So the vaccine is good and effective. We, an even more urgent call for individuals to be vaccinated. When they are, when your turn is available, and so with that, I'll, I'll turn it back over to the governor and and be willing to take any questions you may have as well. Sorry about that. Yep. Haley Mason with CBS 46 News. Governor Kemp, uh, Amazon offered in a letter to the president, President Biden, that they would help distribute the vaccine. I know Starbucks and Microsoft offered in Seattle or Washington. Would you be open to working with a big company like Amazon or, or has your administration started working with large companies to help expand distribution? Yeah, well, we've already been talking to big companies, uh, smaller providers, anybody you can imagine. I, I told people several weeks ago, that we needed to move the needle on this. And uh, I think my message was very pointed at the time. Uh, I think people have gotten that message and you have seen with a 466% increase that we have moved the needle. You know, now what we're trying to do is look ahead to when this, now that we have this allocation of 40,000 doses that was being used in the nursing homes to be at our disposal, that we can start sending that out to the expanded 1A criteria in mass vaccination sites, sending it to other uh, counties, other folks that, that are doing, you know, uh, Dr. Toomey mentioned the, the local pharmacies, the grocery store pharmacies and, and others that have availability to just keep us pushing that 120,000 doses out very quickly every week. Um, you know, the big question for us on anything like that is, are we going to get enough supply from the federal government to be able to even use an option like that? Because it does us no good to set that up and have people standing there if we do not have shots to give. So that's kind of what we're waiting to hear from the new administration. Thank you. Thank you. Governor, with the Biden administration's commitment pledge for one million doses a day for 100 days, can you even anticipate what that would look like in Georgia, what Georgia's share could be? Does Georgia have enough medical staffing, enough supplies, enough resources? What would that even look like in Georgia? Well, as, I, as I've said before, we're going to use every available resource that we have in state government. Um, our county governments, I want to really give them a shout out. A lot of them have been stepping up to support their local county health departments. We've seen that. I mean, I've heard stories in multiple places, like in Hall County, Cherokee County, City of Dalton, where they've all been pitching in to give the resources to public health where they can get the vaccinations out quicker, let the health people do what they do. Um, the governments are taking the security, administrative, a lot of the scheduling as well off of them. But to me, I think what a million doses a day nationwide, I believe that's what's going on right now. We can verify that number. I think the question is, are we going to see additional supply from what we're already getting? I think uh, from our communications that we've had uh, with the Biden administration early on, I think that's what they're trying to dig in right now is to see what that would be, what that would look like. And at this point, we don't have any details from them. 
And one quick, quick follow-up, looking at the long term, looking ahead. The, gov the President is talking about activating the Defense Production Act. Are there any Georgia industries or other facilities that could be subject to the Defense Production Act to make medical supplies and even vaccines here in Georgia? Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't probably want to speak to, I mean, look, he, he could use the Defense Production Act for any industry that, that he cares to do so. Uh, obviously, President Trump used that. Um, President Biden has said that he would do that as well. You know, I don't know, not speaking to Pfizer or Moderna or Johnson & Johnson, uh, if they get the emergency approval from FDA where we can have us another option here, which will increase supply. I mean, I hope that day is coming very quickly, and I've heard and read really good things about the the J&J &J vaccine. But we just don't know what that would look like. I mean, if you do the Defense Production Act, but, but Pfizer and Moderna can't turn it out any faster than they already ha are doing, it doesn't do you a whole lot of good. But there may be bandwidth there. You know, hopefully we'll know that sooner rather than later. And as soon as we know that, we are already planning for that day. We are already planning for mass vaccination sites. We can ramp that up. Uh, I feel, and, and you know, Dr. Toomey is welcome to speak to this, but we have over 1,700 providers signed up. I hear every day, we've got this, we've got that. You know, we can give this many vaccines every day. We just need the doses. And that's the problem. We don't have the doses. You know, we're using up and we're catching up with the current doses we had to expand that and to send more to people that we know are out there that can get them out. We just got to have more of them. So, Governor, you just touched on what I wanted to focus on. Obviously, public health departments aren't staffed and aren't prepared to do mass vaccinations. Is the plan ready today? If you got a doubling of this supply, a tripling of the supply, would you have the people and the plan in place to get it to folks? Well, we're, we're planning for that day. Uh, if we got that notice today, it, it would take a little while for that supply to actually get in the logistical change and to get here. But we would be ready when that day happens. I mean, we are, we are thinking that far out. I've been very honest with people uh, and telling them that there's going to be bumps and hurdles. This is not like giving a flu vaccine um, where you have, you know, two or three weeks to report that you've given the vaccine. There's a 24-hour reporting period, which is stressing our health care networks, public health, hospitals. Um, it is a vaccine where there's a monitoring period that has to be given after you get the COVID-19 vaccine. You don't have to do that with a flu, flu vaccine. There's storage requirements. There's time requirements on the vaccine. So that's one another reason that we're scheduling, not just to make sure we don't have people standing in, you know, eight hour, 10 hour lines to get a vaccine, but also we need to do this logistically because we need to use every dose that's in that vial. And if we don't have it scheduled and nobody shows up, we don't want to waste a dose because there's not somebody there. So that's why we're working uh, to do that. And it is more of a logistical challenge. I think you can see, and I've actually felt this uh, from people that I've talked to on the ground that are, you know, having successful vaccination programs or days or a couple of days that everybody's getting a lot better at this. They're getting more comfortable with the scheduling. We know we're still dealing with certain issues that we got to continue to move the needle on. Uh, but Dr. Toomey's team's working on that. I can assure you that my team here in the state capitol is working on that 24-7. They got the message as well as others when I was talked about bringing the big truck out. And we're going to do that as we move into the next three, four, five weeks. I can't control the supply we're getting. But if we get more, I can control and Dr. Toomey can control. And we will do everything in our power to empower not only the government, but also private sector partners to get this vaccine in people's arms. Uh, Governor, um the DPH website earlier today showed that the number of um, Pfizer allocations to Georgia has matched the number of um, Pfizer doses that have been shipped here. And so I was curious if um, there's been any additional information about whether there will be more Pfizer doses and, and you know, should that, is that a, a concern of yours? I don't know if Dr. Toomey, we also got Ryan Loke here, but Dr. Toomey, can you speak to that? Did you hear that question all right? Yeah, if you, if you don't mind, can you just repeat that one more time? 
Yeah, um, I think the website showed earlier today that the number of Pfizer um, allocations here has now matched the number of um, shipments. So I was curious if that, you know, if you all know any more information about it, you know, whether more Pfizer doses will be coming here and if that is a concern. I mean, I think that the uh, allocation is going to be totally dependent on the production, but we will get enough doses of Pfizer to ensure that the individuals who are vaccinated with Pfizer first dose will also get a Pfizer second dose because you have to match those doses. Um, so I, I, again, we are totally dependent on, at this point, the federal side letting us know what our allocations will be and in what proportion. We can't say we just want all Moderna because it's easier for us to use in rural Georgia. They made it very clear you kind of you get what you are going to get that you can't pick and choose, but it is very important we get enough to ensure the second doses, and, and we, we can ensure that. I also wanted, in, in, in um, an answer to a prior question, you know, the uh, public health clearly can't do this alone, and whether it's uh, big, large scale vaccination events or other things, we're working in partnership, for example, with. Uh, med schools and, and, and other university systems and hospitals. And so my vision, I think the governor's too, of a, a large-scale event, say here in Atlanta, will involve multiple providers, not just public health people. We have multiple uh, staff that have already been, been uh, hired to help with vaccination. But we also have many, many volunteers who have volunteered through Serve Georgia, literally thousands of volunteers so they can be staffing the data entry as well as some of the other um, some of the other work that's done just to prepare for the vaccinations themselves and many physicians and retired nurses have actually signed up to be on the medical reserve corps and deployed to help us so we have you know even recognizing that the need is going to be even greater we are uh, enlisting is, is help from all, all sides, including the university systems and the hospital systems to, to join with us. And the final thing to point out is we are working closely with the governor and his team to expand the number of providers who can work in the community. You know, whether it be nurse, uh, nurse practitioners, PAs, others, and, and I think in, in the days ahead, you'll probably see some executive orders that will expand that further so that we can ensure that we have a maximum uh, number of, 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 of licensed professionals available to be part of this vaccination team. Yeah, just one, one follow-up on that. We, we get, we only know a week ahead what we're, what we're, the doses we're getting for that week, and that normally loads on Thursday night. So that's, you know, we only know what we know, and we'll know more hopefully tonight about what we're looking at next week. Governor, you confirmed that there's much more demand among residents here in Georgia than there is supply, yet we know that folks from other states are coming to Georgia to be vaccinated. I wondered what your reaction is to that. Could you say that one more time? Yet you confirmed that there's more demand among Georgian residents than there is supply, but we know of folks who come from other states to be vaccinated here in Georgia. What's your response to that? Well, there may be Georgians going to other states to get vaccinated. I haven't heard a whole lot about that. I don't know if Dr. Toomey wants to address, address that. You know, I, I would love after the conference to hear your stories, because I, I have, the funniest thing is early on, I was told by my best friend in college who lives in Pennsylvania that she was told she could get vaccinated in Georgia because there was a caravan coming down here through somebody who had an inside uh, track to some vaccine and I was flabbergasted I said no you can't <laughs> don't you dare um, and, and I've since told all of our um, all of our health departments as well as other providers that this vaccine is for residents uh, of Georgia and that you have to say no you can't uh, be vaccinated here with the exception of those who may be out of state but work here and we do have individuals from Tennessee who may work here, individuals from Florida who may work in, in South Georgia, and then they can be vaccinated as part of, particularly as part of their um, cadre of, of, um, of, at their work site. But you know, we've been, when I became aware of that, uh, I, we jumped on that right away and got the word out to providers as well as 
as to our own public health departments and have since tried to stay on top of that. Uh, interesting problem that I never anticipated. My question's for Dr. Toomey also, I'm sorry. Um, Dr. Toomey, you mentioned recently, I can't remember where it was, but that there were about 800 doses of vaccine that got here and were thawed out and were yeah. unusable. Do you have more of a total picture of how often we're seeing that? And um, does that count against us? Are those numbers included? Oh, no, that, that's a very good question because uh, in that same, uh, it, this comes through McKesson. The Moderna comes through McKesson, so it's a, it's a distributor that is directly contracted with CDC to send to all the states. We, uh, our, our 800 doses thawed, and so they were, they were not usable. About 4,000, I believe, doses to other states actually got too cold, and so they were no good. And so this happens periodically. That hasn't happened yet to us. We have had some situations in our state um, where, for example, uh, in one hospital, the vaccine was being stored in a freezer, and the power went out, and the alarm didn't go out. So we, those had to be replaced. Uh, but when it's, when it's damaged in storage, or rather when it's damaged like that in transit, it is replaced without counting against our allocation because it's, it's, it hasn't even gotten to us yet. It's, it's uh, in a sense, it was done by uh, in transit. And so we keep track of that very closely and ensure that our allocation stays at that constant level, despite the fact that the vaccine may have been spoiled through transit. Now, that's a good question and one we are monitoring closely is this vaccine is so uh, unusual in its requirements for transport and storage. Um, and a quick follow-up to that. I know the governor mentioned there's been instances of people not showing up for their appointments. And, and how, do we have any idea how much vaccine maybe is being left at the end of the day? Are we tracking that? We aren't specifically tracking it. And it's an interesting question. And I, it may be one that we can try to uh, address. But my, uh, my comments to the providers in our own health department is don't let vaccine go to waste. And I was told by one of my colleagues who was uh, at a hospital getting vaccinated with her mother that when the, um, when the uh, day was over, there were some extra doses. They came out into the waiting room. Is there anybody here who wants the vaccine? We'll, we won't waste it. We will we'll put it in arms. And that's what we're encouraging. Do not, uh, do not let that vaccine go to waste, even if you're not technically part of that. Um, that group, and, and I've actually encouraged many of the of the health departments, and, and here at Fulton as well, which has the largest population, to keep a waiting list. And if you see that you're going to appointments have not been taken, um, put people on the waiting list. And I've sent people on this waiting list, and most of them have gotten in because at the end of the day there may be a little extra vaccine. And now that Pfizer has said we can actually technically use six doses, not five out of the vial. We have, have more vaccine per, um, per allocation than we had before. And so we are encouraging um, that the waiting list and calling people in and quickly getting them uh, into the health department and not waste a single dose. This is precious. We don't want to waste any, any vaccine. Yeah, and I've, I've heard similar stories of that of someone not showing up for an appointment and they're calling somebody on a waiting list and they're going in and got the vaccine. Yes, Don't Governor, one of the president's executive orders talks about reimbursing the states for 100 percent of the cost of using the National Guard for COVID relief efforts. To what degree do you think that will help Georgia? How do you envision that uh, and using the National Guard more extensively perhaps than you already have? Well, a couple of things. I mean, look, I've talked a lot about what a great job the Georgia National Guard has done on a lot of different missions, not just COVID. And I spoke very pointedly about that the other day, and uh, we appreciate all that they've done here at the Capitol over the last few, year, few days, uh, what they've done at the Capitol in Washington, D.C., and what they continue to do in the COVID response here. They're still working at food banks uh, because it's tough getting volunteers in this environment and doing many, many other things. We will definitely use them in vaccine distribution if we get to the point where we need them. The problem that we have now, and a lot of people are making this suggestion, is like, can we get some guardsmen or women to help us uh, deliver these shots and be part of this team? Uh, a lot of the issue taking the medical professionals that are in the guard 
and calling them up to help with this is you would be taking them out of their day job at a hospital or other medical facility where they are desperately needed. Uh, so we have to keep that in mind. I think down the road, if the situation calls for it, if we get more demand, uh, we could definitely use them on logistics. I've stayed in constant contact with General Cardin. I had a conversation uh, with General John King as well today about that. So I think they can help with other things, it's security and other things. Uh, but keep in mind, the county governments and city governments have really stepped up to the plate to support their local health department. They're using you know, their fire department EMTs, their ambulance folks, they're using their public safety personnel, whether it be sheriff's deputies, city police officers to help with traffic control. They're getting their administrative folks to help with logistics and technology and many, many other things. So I want to thank all of them for, for being part of our team to help move the needle. And right now, that has definitely moved the needle, as you've seen with the 440 uh, percent increase. In the future, though, if we need to move the needle again, as I said a few minutes ago, we will use every state resource that we have, including the Guard. And I certainly appreciate the ability to have that 100 percent funded from the federal government. Thank you. All right. Thank you.